Oh, we're getting bites. Yep, that's a good fish. On the fish bite. What's up, guys? We're gonna head out into the intercoastal waterway on a kayak. We're gonna do some fishing and whatever I catch, should it be legal, we're going to eat it. No particular species in mind, whatever I can get to bite on a hook, we're gonna bite later on. What do you guys think? Game of chicken? I think he'll move first. Switching tactics just a hair before we get going here. I'm just gonna go with a popping cork. I've decided instead I'm gonna stick with a uh, little jig head on the bottom. Put this little guy out there on the bottom with some uh, shrimp on it. Let's get a little piece of shrimp out of here. See our hook there from our other rig. Don't want that to get lost. Especially out here with all these birds all right now this jig will catch fish on its own it's not like you have to tip it with something if you work it properly it is a good lure on its own however tipped with the natural bait it's almost cheating almost cheating but uh, it's that kind of day so I'm just gonna work this along the bottom there is a deep drop off here obviously this being the intercoastal waterway Boom, that's got a nice little casting weight to it. Good compromise, good way to jig head, small hook. So I can get it out there, I can sink it down, but I can still catch you know, a variety of species, even small stuff on it. And because I've got it tipped to natural bait, I can dead stick it for a bit before I start to work it. Oh, I missed him, something was interested. Yeah, look at that. Small fish took the shrimp right off the tip. Now, I do have fish bites with me, and if I feel like these fish are uh, just making mincemeat of this shrimp too quickly, I will switch over. It's much tougher bait. But I want to start by downsizing. There we go. Just make it a bit smaller. There are good sized whiting down there to be had. Good sized croaker too. Just wanna focus that, that little tag end of shrimp around the point of the hook. So when he bites, that hook is right there. Oh, something just jumped right in front of me. I don't know if you guys got to see it, but I missed it. Yep, that's a fish on. Got that one. Let's see what, see what we got here. Itty bitty croaker. But hey, that is, uh, that's perfect. That's perfect for what we're doing today. I will keep this fish. I said we were gonna eat whatever we could catch and I have two different ideas in mind for what we're gonna use these fish for. And uh, you know, croaker will work for both. So since we are keeping him, let's see what I want to do. I am going to try to keep him alive for a little bit. Use this stringer here. And I know the stringer is pushing it for such a small fish. I don't know how long we're going to be out today. And uh, I want to keep these guys as fresh as possible. So let's go through that membrane right there. Boom. Slide it all the way down. There we go, loop it through. And that way that fish is not gonna get off that line. And uh, we can keep him alive and fresh for a little bit. There we go, just let him kinda, yeah. Now you just gotta be careful this end doesn't get, get lost. Especially when you start putting bigger fish on there, they'll, they'll take off with it. Those marshes out there are loaded with it. You can just see every every time I go out there, I end up catching a couple of sh stringers here and there. 
There we go. Let's see if we can get another fish. It's a good cast. Okay, we're on again. Now, this one's got a bit of fight to him. Now, he's not big. He's got a little kick. Ah, oh, and that's why. Yes, this is a much better fish. Much better fish for uh, for eating. A little sand trout. I mean, he's still not high end, but much happier to have that. Anytime I do a catch and a cook, we get a fish that's a little bit more palatable. <laughs> I start looking forward to uh, that part of my day a little more. S slide him down there. Oops. Our stringer caught around the debris there. God, that stuff is so sharp. There we go. Slide him down. Get these guys back out. There we go. Walk this back off. That's a good sign. That's what I, I just want a couple of those. That's all we really need today. Just get a couple of trout like that, maybe. You know, ideally a speckled trout would be perfect, but uh, the sand trout, the whiting, and the croaker kind of rule this little area. Let's go out again. Same area. Boom, right there. Let it sink down. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Again, a lot of kick on this guy. Hopefully, hopefully another sand trout. Oh, that's a good one. That's a huge sand trout. At least for this water anyway. That's about as good as I usually get them. Oh, perfect. Oh my goodness, I'm getting excited now. Y'all ever have one of those days, guys? I mean, I know you do, we all do. Where you go out and then things just start looking rough. And you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out. And then suddenly, it's like somebody flipped a switch. And everything starts working out for you. Now remember, guys, these are, these are sand trout. These are not speckled trout or spotted sea trout, as I call them. But uh, what that means is that the reason I'm not measuring these fish is because they don't have the same limits as uh, some of the other game fish. Oh, look, these guys kind of go into that tunnel there. They don't have the same size limit as uh, other trout species, like the speckled trout. So uh, no, I'm not keeping fish that I should be releasing or anything like that. Just in case there's anyone out there who might be wondering what's going on. That's what's going on. I do want to get one or two more and then we'll head out and I've got some, uh, some stuff I brought special to cook them up with. We're gonna cook them up on the beach. All right, guys, we're gonna switch baits here. I'm gonna tip this jig with a little bit of these fish bites. Just a scented bait with a very, very uh, firm texture to them. You can see there's a lattice. There's a lattice of fabric that's woven in there to these scented baits. If you don't know what these are, they're amazing. And this one is scented like a shrimp and yes why why would i use a fish bite that's scented like a shrimp when i already have a bag full of shrimp uh in this particular instance the answer is entirely texture this is a tougher bait this is going to resist being torn off the hook the fish will have to chew on this bait longer and therefore that hook is going to be near or in their mouth longer that is the entire point of switching over to this instead of the shrimp i had over there Let's go, actually, let's walk a little bit down here. I was having more success with those trout a little further away from the boat. Let's go out. There. Nice. Good and far on that one. It's another advantage. I can really whip those casts out there without the, any fear of that shrimp shredding going flying. Oh, we're getting bites. Yep, that's a good fish. On the fish bite. This is a good one. Nice. Woo. Perfect. There we go. Look at that. 
perfect. That's the way it should be. That's a good sized one right there. Perfect eating size sand trout. Let's get him on the stringer. We got one more. I didn't even realize it. He picked up the bait and swam right at us. Oh, it's a little, uh, little white perch. Look at that. I catch a lot of these. Beautiful little fish, though. That's a nice little fish. Tell you what, I've got enough. I've got enough to eat. I always like to put something back. That's, you know, my preferred method of fishing is catch and release. So since this guy is uh, unique, let's go ahead and uh, let's put him back. All right, we got a nice little haul, enough for a meal. So let's head back and let's cook them up. Just to make sure our payload is secure, as they say. I think that's what they say. Somebody says it. I said it. There we go. Let's get out of here. Okay. Time for the long paddle back. Oh, wow. There we go. So you'll notice guys there's still a lot of meat on this fish um, this is not a proper fillet knife I had to borrow a knife because I forgot mine at home however not a single bit of this is going to waste um, I'm actually going to use this for another recipe every last bit of what you see here except for these organs which we're going to get rid of shortly all right we're at the beach yes uh, you can build campfires on areas of this beach so here we go guys we've got our scaled and, and washed fillets of trout here on the little uh, griddle and I'm gonna cook them with olive oil, some lemon, a little bit of wine, nothing fancy, and of course some salt. So let's go ahead and get that going.
All right, let's have a little taste right here. This looks, this looks about done. I did not bring utensils, guys. Just a little bit in my hand, not fancy, but it will do. There you guys go. Nice little bit of trout. You can see the pepper and the coriander in there. Let's have a let's have a bite and see what it tastes like. It's not bad. Not bad at all. The taste of the uh, peppercorn and the coriander coming through the strongest. Obviously, that was the last seasoning I put on there, so naturally that's the one that has a little bit of bite to it. But uh, yeah, I can taste each of the individual seasonings that we put on there and the fish itself. So. All things considered, not bad. Not bad at all. I've had much worse. Let's go in for this guy. Let's get a bit of, let's go in for this piece right here. Get the, I want the edge of that skin. That, that, that bit got crisped up nice. The rest of it didn't really get as crispy as I wanted to, but this bit did. All right. The skin, the skin carries that fishy taste a little further than the meat, which makes a lot of sense. The skin is valued for having, you know, all the oils packed into it. Uh, let's pick out, let's pick out this little piece right here. Oof. Look at that. Nice, nice. Look at that piece. That is a crispy char on that skin. That is what I want. This, this looks like it could be maybe the best piece. You can see the peppercorn there on the corner and a nice, nice little crisp to it. Let's have a bite on this. That is definitely the best piece of the fish, for sure. Getting that fish crispy is critical. That's one of the things that can make outdoor cooking kind of challenging is we don't have the fine settings that we do on a stovetop. So being able to control your fire, the environment that you're cooking in, um, that's really the biggest hurdle to overcome. Catching food, not that hard. Seasoning food, you know, not that hard. Stop by the grocery store. Controlling the fire outside to cook it right at that temperature to make that texture what you want, that's where things start getting difficult. But uh, I mean, as it goes, I think we did all right today. Well, I reckon that'll just about do it for us today, guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. When you do subscribe, hit that little bell down below the bottom right corner. That way, when I upload a video, you get all the notifications straight away. If you haven't already, head over to my other channel, Wildlife. I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. It's all about fishing, fishing in the city, fishing on the surf, fishing in the middle of the woods, you name it, we fish it. More is coming, guys. Stay tuned, and until it's here, I will see you guys later.